Hello everyone, our lesson for today is about conceptual framework and theoretical framework. Definition, characteristics, their differences, and guidelines. So, the types of research frameworks are classified into two the theoretical framework and conceptual framework. Let us first know what is theoretical framework. A theoretical framework is commonly used for studies that anchor on time-tested theories that relate the findings of the investigation to the underpinning relevant theory of knowledge. It also shapes the justification of the research problem objectives to provide the basis on its parameter. So from the word theory, your framework is based from a theory, a time-tested theory. While conceptual framework, a conceptual framework refers to the actual ideas, beliefs, and tentative theories that specifically support the study. It is primarily a conception or model of what is out there that the researcher plans to study. A conceptual framework is based from you as a researcher. You make it from the ideas, beliefs, and from the readings that you did. So what are the similarities and differences of theoretical? So what are... So let us proceed to the similarities of the theoretical and conceptual framework. So first is they provide an overview, overall view. So they provide an overview, overall view. So they provide an overall view of the research study. They anchor a theory or concept that supports the study guide in developing relevant research question or objective and helps justify assumptions and hypotheses. They aid in choosing an appropriate methodology, help in gathering and interpreting data, guide in identifying possible threats, and to validate. So as one, Theoretical and conceptual framework guides us in our research. So what are the differences naman, of theoretical and conceptual framework? So the differences between the two is divided into four. Scope, focus of content, number of theories, and time development. So let us first focus on theoretical framework. So ang scope ng theoretical framework is more broader and it uses different theories from different studies. In focus of content in theoretical framework, theory use is already in the field. So ang theory na gagamitin mo in making your theoretical framework is already used by different studies and it has been here for a very long time. Number of theories in theoretical framework, you present one theory at a time only. You will only use one theory and focus on it. Time of development, because the theory has been here for a very long time, it has been used by different studies. While in conceptual framework, the scope because you made your conceptual framework, it focuses on your study only. Focus of content, it is set of related concept to a specific study. Kasi study mo yun, you, you, you only focus on the content of your study. Number of theories, you may synthesize one or more theory. Unlike in theoretical framework, you only focus on one theory. In conceptual framework, you read a lot of theories and summarize it, synthesize it into one. 
time of development, you only develop your conceptual framework during the time of your writing. How will you develop a conceptual framework? The first one is identifying the key concepts in your study by referring to your The first one is identifying the key concepts in your study by referring to your research question or objective. So you should always know what are the important variables in your research because those are your key concepts. So you should be aware of the different... You should familiarize yourself from your research. Search for existing theories that incorporate the same concept and investigate their relationship with one another. So, in the second part, papasok dito yung review of related literature. While reading different literatures connected to your study, you will notice that they used either conceptual framework or theoretical framework. So, from reading those things, you will get an idea what to do with your framework. Next, using the existing theories as a guide. As in the second step, same lang siya ng third step, dahil nakita mo that these studies use this conceptual framework or theoretical framework in guiding them with their study, you may also use it in your study. Kasi nga, you only review the literatures related to your study. In case that there are concepts not covered by selected theories, incorporate them into your framework. So kung may nabasa ka and parang feel mo kulang, and you saw na kulang yun, you may incorporate. Magdagdag ka if possible. However, make sure that your incorporating is necessary in your study. So make sure that yung idadagdag mo ay connected sa study mo. After completing the initial draft of your conceptual framework, write a narrative explanation of each concept. So, nakagawa ka na, then there will be a explanation below it. Refer once again to your research question. Check if the conceptual framework is aligned with them. So, remember that you should always align everything from your research question research objective and rationale of the study. Note that the process of creating a conceptual framework is developmental. This means that it may still be refined or changed as you read more literature and investigate more theories. So, ang conceptual framework mo ay maaaring magbabago depende sa mga binabasa mong related studies. Maaaring mas maganda yung framework ng isang study, or mas maganda yung isa, then mamimili ka dun kung ano ang iyong magiging guide. And depende din yun sa iyong key concepts. In some cases, the research hypothesis is presented at the end of the conceptual framework. So in making your framework, you will make a paradigm. A paradigm is a grammatic representation diagrammatic. A paradigm is a diagrammatic representation of a conceptual framework. It predicts in a more vivid way what a conceptual framework want to convey. So in writing your research, you may use theoretical or conceptual framework. But here, let us focus on making conceptual framework because it needs a lot of work rather than the other one. Kopya ka lang sa theoretical framework. But in conceptual framework, you will make it as your own. So let us go to the kinds of conceptual framework paradigm. So the first one is the Context Input Process Product Model or CIPP. This approach is to evaluate or this approach to evaluation is rooted in its definition of evaluation as the process of delimiting, obtaining, and providing useful information for judging decision alternative. This is an example of CIPP. This is the context input 
process and product and below it is the quality evaluation but let us not focus on this model rather we will focus on input process output because you will make this paradigm as your conceptual framework so what is input process output this paradigm indicates the inputs required process and the output this approach is seated on the premise of acquiring essential information by converting inputs into outputs through the required processing step in obtaining the result. So later on, you will see how input process output is being done. Let us first define the three elements. The input is usually the independent variable. So you should always know what is the independent, independent variable of your study. So, ang mga nilalagay sa input ay yung mga independent variable and yung mga makikita sa iyong questionnaire. The process is the intervening or solution consisting of the instruments and analysis used to acquire the result. So, instruments, as we have mentioned before, are the questionnaire survey interview. So, those are the instruments and analysis used to acquire the result. Pwedeng data analysis, pwedeng ganun. Then the last one is the output is the findings or outcome of the intervening being made to solve the, to solve the identified problem. So output is the anticipated result of your study. So, technically, ang input process output is yung parang drawing ng iyong research. Paano mo gagawin ang iyong research? But in diagram form. So, this is an example of input process output. So, it input. So, input. It, so, input. It includes socio-economic social demographic profile age sex marital status food safety profile knowledge attitude and practice the process profiling survey questionnaire data analysis and the output is the anticipated result of your study which is the proposed intervention program so you should always know what are your independent variable, the instrument that you're going to use, and your anticipated result of your study. So that you can easily make your input process output paradigm. So review your research paper so you can make your paradigm. 